Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and today we're discussing how to stay fast, how to be quick, how to develop quickness, speed, power, all these different uh, physiological adaptations that you might be searching for. So yesterday we talked about ordering your exercises. We talked about doing your speed exercises first before you fatigue yourself with more strength-based stuff. And, you know, maybe even more hypertrophy-based stuff as well. Now, outside of that, what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, fully recover between my sets. If we are training speed, we need to think about what is it that makes something fast? What makes something powerful? And the key here is the time element of this. If I try to move heavy weights really fast, that is certainly something that I can train, but that is not power in the purest sense. Power is force and time, okay? So I need to be able to do this stuff quickly if I'm going to be building my power up. Um, and if I just, you know, if I do set after set after set, which I have to kind of do, if I'm going to get any sort of training adaptation, if I keep going but I don't rest quite enough, then I'm actually gonna start slowing down. And so if I'm throwing a med ball for my practice and you know I get on my third set and I've only been resting 30 seconds because then I feel like I got a better workout in, but the ball is going you know, 0.8 the speed that it was going before, I'm not training power anymore, I'm training conditioning. It is a conditioning workout. So you have to, I just need you to be aware of that. Um, this is one of my pet peeves. This is why we're making this video. If I am, it, it's again, it's okay to train conditioning with power movements, but don't say that you're training power. Don't say that you're keeping people quick because that's not what you're doing. You're not making people quicker. What you're doing is you're resisting fatigue under some base level of quickness. It's not gonna be your max quickness. It's not gonna be max power because you have some fatigue. You won't be able to access max power. So if the goal is to increase your vertical jump, then you don't want any fatigue, none at all, okay? You need to rest at least a minute after you know very short jumps, at least 45 seconds if you're only doing like one, peak jump. In general, you need to rest more than you think you have to. You need to take a lot more time. Like once you feel like you're ready to go, you should probably take another minute or two. And that will allow you to just give that drive. I'm, I keep thinking of this neural drive. All these contractions, they start from the brain, right? And so I need to be able to say, hey, go, 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 go. And all of that descending drive comes from the brain. So stay fresh. Make sure that you're resting longer than you think you have to if your goal is to develop max power, max speed, highest jumps, uh, throwing balls harder. Like all of that requires very, very short, very, very intense bouts of exercise. And if you start to notice yourself slowing down, then maybe it's time to stop because you're no longer training speed and power then, you're training conditioning.